Hey guys, welcome back. This is MD and these are the things I wish I knew before. So first things first, we're going to speak about or talk about the monster abilities. These are a must. We're talking about two things. We're going to talk about the monster actions, which are the world map actions, as well as the abilities they gain as they level up. So first, we're going to talk about the actions. For example, some of them can do monster search. Some of them can swim, like this one, which is an important monster. Some of them can just do plant search if you're like looking for a specific plant. Or uh, some of them can do bug search or so and so. Maybe you're looking for a certain type of honey for a, a weapon upgrade or so, or so on. But yeah, carry a bunch of them, as for example, like a jump monster, a search monster, uh, a monster that can climb, a monster that can swim. For example, this monster that I have, it's a search monster. If you like search for like the nearby plants and monsters, as you can see, whatever uh, is there, I can just even look at them you know, from here, like whatever, like if, if I'm looking for a specific monster, I can see it on the map and maybe a special tree, I can look at it from the map itself. It's very, very, very convenient. And for example, if there's a treasure inside the water, what I need, I need to like swim uh, to get to that monster. The good thing about this is like you can just immediately go to that specific area where that type of monster is required. You can press B and you can immediately change to that specific monster. That's very, very convenient. The only downturn to that is you need to like, uh, uh, you know, manually change it later on if you want to change it. That's the only downside. But yeah, if you go like to an area where you need to have a jump monster, and if you already have it in your party, you can just press the B button and it will change it to that specific uh, monster and you can just uh, continue uh, with the game. And yeah, and there's this monster here, as you can see, uh, I can just like speed dash around if you like, if I want to like go around like faster. This is another monster that I can have. So you can see how convenient and useful these monsters actions are in the map or when I'm like exploring the map. You know, maybe I just want to like uh, get to a, a rare den that I have seen. I'm going to come back to that later. As well as the other abilities that they gain. As you can see here, we have the heart churro, which you can use to revive back one of the hearts. As you know, we have three hearts in the game. And if you lose all of them, you will die. So you can like replenish one of them by going to the camp. If you don't want to go to the camp, you can use them. Or as well as some of the monsters will even like get abilities that will get you one heart back in the battle. The second tip that I want to talk about is the anger management. We have three different attack types. We have technical, we have power and we have speed. Usually when the monsters are angry, they will shift. Their attack they will change completely their attack pattern so usually and most likely for example if they're using speed and if they change it then just go and attack them with the type that they were using against you before for example like this monster was using speed and when he gets angry and you will see that from his face it becomes red like this now i know if he was using speed before now i'm gonna use a speed against him otherwise as you can see uh, he will find an, an attack type that is that I'm weak against. For example, like I was using technical, he changed to power. And if this monster is using speed, for example, the Anjanath, and if he's gonna get angry, and so I need to use technical to be able uh, to defeat him. So always use the attack type that the monster was using before. So he was using speed, I need to like change to speed attacks, and I can change. The monster to a speed attack as well. I'm going to talk about this one a little bit later. So this is how it is. They usually go back to whatever, uh, uh, whatever is like I'm use I'm weak against. So you use what they were using beforehand. When they get angry, use the attack type that they were using uh, beforehand, and you should be uh, good to go. And that's it for this tip. Yeah, this is uh, annoying, I know, but that's how you do it actually. The third point that I want to talk about uh, that is we have three clashes in this game. One is where we need to like tap the A button like continuously, just keep tapping it. One is where we need to rotate the R or the right stick. And the other one is where we need to press the L and R alternative. So always try to win, win those. Uh, it's gonna like save you a lot of like damage taken and it's gonna also deal a lot of damage to the to the monster and sometimes it's going to negate uh, that damage as well so yeah this is the second one that i was talking about rotating 
just keep rotating it like you know, round and round, like anticlockwise, clockwise doesn't matter. Just like you know, like rotate it roundwise. That's the second type. And there is the third one. Usually these attacks come when the monsters are angled. And you can see it, like whenever their faces is red, there is and you know that this is coming up. Especially like if they are like face to face, uh, if they, both of their abilities are like the same. So yeah, it can happen. And this is the second one, or the third one, sorry, that I was talking about. The, the uh, uh, L uh, and the R. And usually these are very easy and you can win them all the time. So yeah, just, just, you know, just win them. And it's gonna save you a lot of damage. And at the same time, it's gonna deal a lot of damage. Very basic. These are the three types that I have seen so far. Maybe there is more later on in the game. But so far, these are the three main types and you can see them all the time. The fourth point that I want to talk about is is your health. You can see at the bottom, my health or my monster's health has this white bar. That means is that the other party members are going to heal him. So I don't need to waste my potions. So always keep your eyes at the bottom. Like for example, like I mean, if I want to heal myself, just just wait a bit. Like see if they were like if they're gonna heal him or not. Then I will just heal. For example, like now you can see that they are being healed. So I'm not gonna waste my time like healing. I'm just gonna go with the attack because I know that they will be healed by my other member. As you can see, that's what uh, she did. She just healed my party members. So always look at the bottom. Uh, it will help you a lot. It will save your time a lot because uh, I wasted my time or like my uh, attack by using a potion when uh, when immediately after that I was given a potion so yeah and also if you don't want to heal yourself you can just change the monster as you can see now I was like about to change him but then I saw that he's being or it's being healed so I didn't bother like changing uh, this monster at all yep easy peasy so always keep your eyes at the bottom this is something important I'm gonna like come to this uh, a bit more about all of the things at the bottom as you can see we have three hearts that monster is being healed so yeah just continue attacking and you know uh, the weak points and so on so and you're gonna survive this these battles this way very very easily without wasting any of your uh, attacks the fifth point that I want to talk about is the looks and having three different types of monsters with you these are the power the technical and the speed always keep them with you all the time you know always you don't want to like go because whatever the monsters attack type is going to be you will have something that's going to work against him for example like for the looks this monster looks like he's either going to be a technical or a speed that's why i went with the power if you already fought with the monster you can actually check uh, his uh, type before you approach him to fight with him so that's a good strategy as well but if it's the first time for you to fight with a monster then the looks are always uh, there for example this monster here this is my first time fighting with this monster this monster is either, either gonna be a technical or a speed so I can go with power hoping that, uh, that that's it but if you want to go with a safe side you can go with technical because I'm thinking that he's either gonna be a technical or a speed so if I go with technical either I'm gonna be in a draw or I'm gonna beat him but I went with a power hoping that I'm just gonna like you know like go with the critical attacks and everything so yeah you can go with either strategies maybe it will work maybe it will not but yeah it's, it's a good strategy to, to just like you know like play it safe or take a, a small risk in my case I took a small risk and it didn't work but if I went with a technical he would have been uh, weak against my, my technical attacks but yeah, looks are always there. They will help you a lot. Always look at the monster. For example, this monster, it looks like this monster is fast. So yeah, speed is there. So I'm just gonna use a technical and I'm gonna like beat the hell out of this monster. So yeah, keep that in mind. Always carry the, carry the three types and always look at the, uh, the features of the monsters and you should be uh, good to go. The sixth point that I want to talk about is the power in unity which is like combining the kinship skills so as you can see my skill uh, bar is already filled but I'm not gonna use it I'm just gonna wait for the second party member to fill up his gauge and he's gonna or she's gonna ride the monster then I'm gonna ride my monster this way our attack is gonna be more powerful seriously more powerful I mean if you can use uh, the right attack by yourself you're not gonna do, deal that much damage but in case 
your bar is already filled and the other monsters uh, bar is always uh, almost like 10% or 20% then there is no harm for you to use your right attack or the kinship skill attack and it's easy to fill that attack as you can see I know my monster is going to use a technical attack so I'm going to use a technical attack as well so this way I'm going to use a combo and it's going to fill up my kinship uh, or bar uh, fast so that's a good way to like fill it up fast it's really gonna fill up fast because let's see he's using my monster is using a technical i'm gonna use a technical also even if your monster is not using the same attack even the other like party member is using a similar attack then you can do a combo with that monster or that that uh, that party member so this way now i saw that my monster was using a speed but since the other guy rode uh, the monsters i'm gonna ride the monster as well and we're gonna use another combo it's very very fast very very easy the seventh point is about the sound. Always listen to the sound. The sounds that you can see, you can hear this like shiny, sparkly sound. This always indicates rare material. So always the gold, gold bones, some of the mushrooms, uh, some of the bugs. If they make a sound, if they make this like shiny, like sprinkly sound, that means there is something uh, good out there. So always, always open up your uh, ears. You know, like listen, listen to these, uh, to these voices and it's gonna help a lot so don't play this game on mute you know open up the speakers because even if you're roaming around you know sometimes for example the bones you can see the crystals you can see but the other items they look like similar you know they are the similar items but the only way for you to know them is from the sound so just yeah just just open up the listen to these sounds and, and just just keep grabbing these monsters or the items so you can see here even though i didn't see it but i can hear the, the sound so that's why I'm just gonna go and try to pick up what it, that sound is coming from and it's a bug so these bugs can be very very helpful for me to create some weapons and we got it so yep that's a good thing uh, to know the eighth point being is there's always a, a good chance for you to like to find rare monsters eggs uh, especially in a rare den but you can also check whatever monsters you have you know like for example in a specific area and what their eggs uh, look like for example you can see the areas of these monsters if you like if i'm just going to like move it a little bit if i'm going to press the uh, the zr yeah and you can see their locations where they are and sometimes you can see that a one or two monsters are missing from from a certain location so i for sure will know that this area has a little bit of like a, a, a second or a third monster that I didn't haven't seen or haven't picked up yet so uh, I can just like you know like keep checking and even if I for example like get this egg I can open the menu I know the, the shape of this egg the colors of this egg so I can open up the menu check back if I have this egg or if I have caught this uh, monster or not and also it's a good idea if you're going to a rare tin to keep you know like switching up the egg because it's better uh, for you to get a rainbow egg like this one here than the golden for me even if I have the egg but if it's a golden rainbow type I always just immediately exit uh, the area otherwise if if you like find uh, an egg with a shine like a golden sh uh, shiny or shining uh, then uh, if you don't have that egg then just immediately like get it and get out but yeah keep searching keep searching if you're like going for a specific if you like uh, if a monster retreated then that's a good chance if your monster retreated then all of the eggs will be for the same monster so keep digging until you find a golden or a rainbow egg otherwise yep just pick up look at the shape open up the menu you know check if you have it or not check if it's like uh, if you think it's gonna be good or not then yeah uh, just grab it otherwise just keep digging and digging and by the way if you press uh, like uh, uh, cancel here you're just gonna be able to explore the cave even more you don't have to like exit the cave yeah if you like if you're like fighting monsters you can just still fight and then you can exit it later on so if you are like close to the nest and if you, ha if you haven't explored the map yet so uh, yeah just pick up the egg which you want just press cancel and keep exploring and there's less there's a lot of eggs to be found so always keep checking always keep collecting all of the monsters eggs from each area before you move on uh, to the others so always check the most mosty like page to see if you are like missing a monster or two in this area or not 
Ninth point is about finding these cat events. These are the fast travel points. And believe me, this will make your life way, 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 way easier. I cannot emphasize on that anymore. These are really, really important. So whenever you get to a new area, that's the first thing that I, I advise you to like to search for. Always find these festival points. This will make your life way, way easier. You can just jump in and out of these, you know, like from a village to like a middle of a map that you want to like uh, continue the story or go to an, an older area and so and so. And you can see whatever you're missing by the questions mark. If you open up the world map, you can see like how many you are missing. Maybe some of them you'll come back later on from the story, but you can see uh, where they are and how much you're missing in a certain uh, area. For example, like this one that I want to like go, but I'm actually here in this location. As you can see, I have already like found like three of them. So the rest are missing. I need to like search for them. So yeah, always like try to find them and you can just jump in from the map, any point in your like You don't need to like go to them to, uh, to travel. You can just like open up the map anywhere in the world and just fast travel to any point that you have already discovered. Uh, you need to like go and activate them. You cannot just like go near them and they can activate by themselves. No, you need to like activate them like manually. As you know, the best monsters are from the rare dens. I mean like the golden and the rainbow eggs. And these are always recyclable. You know, like they change all the time. The ever dens, they are the same. They're not gonna change, but the, these like monster dens, they always shift and change. So it's a good idea for like for you to like check whatever you are missing that I, uh, that I uh, spoke about like a, a bit earlier. As you can see, I'm missing two here. So what I'm gonna do in this case, for me like to find these and make it easier for myself is I'm just gonna recycle uh, these dens, for example, to find these two monster types. And the way to do it is is as simple as clicking a few buttons, of course, actually, yeah, uh, that's, that's it. You just go to a caravan and you fast travel to that caravan or you just like go and sleep there. It doesn't matter. And you will recycle uh, these uh, dens. And these dens are usually at least, at least, at least have a golden uh, egg inside them. As you can see, there are like a bunch of like rare dens or like normal dens around me and I'm just gonna go sleep until evening and until afternoon or I'm just gonna like fast travel like between two areas it doesn't matter it doesn't matter like how I do it but yeah it's that simple so as soon as you come to, uh, if you like sleep or if you just like fast travel to that area the dens uh, will like you know like randomly shift and change and sometimes as you can see you'll spot a golden one that like that one there just just I just uh, went past by it and if you like, yeah, always, you know, like recycle them. Even this den, which is in front of me, can, can turn into a golden one. So you can either sleep from the same den, or like I said, you can just jump back and forth uh, from two. And you can do that easily by opening the world map by pressing plus. And as you can see, there's another one there behind me. So yeah, it's super easy to recycle them. And just go and explore and find the eggs that you want. Look for the specific shape that you haven't seen in your um, uh, Monstopedia, and yeah, like best of luck uh, hunting. And like I said, open up the map. You don't need to like go. Open up the map and press either afternoon or evening, and just go to the nearest den or the rare den. And that's it. That's it for this one. This is something the game tells you about, but we actually like kind of like ignore it or sometimes we don't focus on, on it like that much. We're too busy like monster hunting, but this is the prayer part. You can give it charms uh, to activate it uh, for like almost like 99 minutes. That's the max you can go. But the more charms you get of it, give it, the higher the level will be. And so yeah, we need like give it the charms, then we will be able to pray and activate like certain things like uh, our luck or like gathering luck and so and so as you can see now my luck uh, player uh, prayer is active I'm gonna like pray there and I'm just gonna uh, head out so my luck is gonna be increased if I want to like gather a specific uh, thing then I'm gonna just increase uh, my gathering and if I'm gonna like go fight with people online I'm gonna increase my training if I'm like so and so so like I said the more uh, charms you give it like the timing is almost 99. It's not gonna go more than that So don't waste your charms, but yeah, the more you give it the easier for it to level up I was level 3 and I gave it like for example like 19 uh, Lucky charms and the level went all the way to level uh, 7 so it jumped by three uh, almost four uh, levels and as you can see even when it like upgrades it will give you like these bonus 
charms as well like sometimes like three or four light bonus charms like uh, randomly and at the same time if you go to the prayer menu you will see that there are new prayers uh, available so whenever whenever you know like when you have these charms you can find them on the shops you can find them on the monsters from the quest so whenever uh, you have a chance uh, give a charm activate a prayer and just go hunting and do your uh, things like like normally uh, this will really really increase the percentages as the level goes up so imagine like having a 50% luck that's awesome 12th point is the side quest this is your haven for getting the XP and the zennies which is the money or the currency in this game and there is no shortage there is no limit on how many you can pick up uh, of course some of them you will think that can, they're gonna be useless but there is no shame in activating them or like activating all of them even if they are complete just activate them again and again so you can like you know you get these items that are useful for your weapons uh, you get a bit of like uh, currency uh, zenies you get a bit of uh, xp all of these so even if they're complete just do them again this is the thing there is no limit unlike the uh, other monster games on the number of quests that you can take so in this one always accept all of them and also accept the quest from the citizens which i'm gonna like come back uh, in a later point there's also the trial quest which you if you want a specific uh, monster weapon you can do these for example if you want to kill a specific monster you can do the online quest you can do the uh, ad hoc quest and so and so there's like a bunch of, of uh, ways uh, uh, to get money and xp but yeah these are like a it's like a bottomless one so always activate all of them always do them you know like over and over you know you just activate and do your thing uh, talking about the quest there's not only the uh, the board quest but also the people uh, and on the, in the maps they will give you like certain uh, quests like the NPCs and these NPCs unlike the board quest sometimes will give you uh, special items and sometimes special skills uh, as well so make sure you always explore uh, the the villages and go back to old villages as well because you never know uh, if one of the citizens will have a specific quest for you and they will give you the special weapon skills you know if you complete them and these are like specific weapon skills you cannot like use them on all weapons but if you do the quest uh, you will automatically have that item in your pouch you don't need to do anything that skill for that specific weapon will be unlocked so yep and this quest like i said just activate do them if you if you're like confused a bit then just talk with them again see what they want wow. and yeah and we can like uh, easily get some of these special uh, skills uh, for our weapons which can be handy in battles my last point here is the market a market is a market if it's a black market or like elven whatever they are they are uh, these guys uh, come early on um, in the game and they give you special items if you give them like uh, bottle caps a bottle caps come from the evidence and there's gonna be a bunch of evidence all around so always you know like increase at this tables uh, size that's an important one especially especially for like hunting for eggs that's my main thing they always like uh, upgrade my stables uh, at the same time they will give you recipes and they'll give you like outfits for yourself and for uh, navios and the other characters so it's a good idea whenever you go to a new map always try to finish up all of the evidence evidence are permanent you if you explore them once if you get all of the uh, bottle caps from them uh, then that's it there's no point for you to go back uh, to these evidence so yeah for example like i increased my stables for now so like yeah i was saying the export i mean the dens if you miss a treasure from an everden uh then you can come back later to it and you can check from the map from the map you can check if you have explored it if you have when it says explored that means you've got everything uh from that den if it doesn't say explored then that means there's at least one treasure missing and even when you are in the den Naviro will tell you that if you have picked everything uh, or or not and you yeah, guys uh, that said that's uh, uh, one of some of the uh, the things that I wish I knew earlier and I hope uh, these will be helpful for you and your journey uh, if it did then please uh, subscribe uh, to our channel uh, or your support is really really helpful it will help us tremendously so please drop a like drop a comment which of these uh, 
tips were helpful for you, which of these things you knew. Maybe there's something that I missed. Maybe there's something more important that you know. So drop a comment below. And if it's awesome, then I'm just going to pin it or give you a heart for that. And let's just keep helping each other and enjoy uh, this awesome game. And you can continue for the rest of the video. And as always, guys, thanks for the support and stay awesome.